Well, hello everyone and welcome to day five of our En Route to Easter devotions. Uh, this is the end of week one, and if you are joining us again at 7 a.m., uh, do let us know in the comment field. Uh, we're so great that we could be together. Uh, today, I will base uh, the devotion on page 21 of the uh, Dwell devotional that you can download on the link that will be up on the screen. Uh, and the subject today is the fear of the Lord. And so we'll be looking at Psalm 22, a couple of verses there together. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise Him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify Him and stand in awe of Him, all you offspring of Israel. For He has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And He has not hidden His face from Him, but has heard when He cried to Him. From you, comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. What does it mean to fear the Lord? I don't know about you, but it's often difficult for me to explain that when I'm asked, especially when I'm trying to introduce somebody to the Lord that the Bible says you should fear. Uh, and in the scriptures, the fear of the Lord is often connected to revelation. Uh, you just think about the epiphanies in, in the Bible where God uh, shows up or, or an angel, a messenger of God shows up. Uh, and the person is often petrified that the messenger needs to say, fear not, fear not. Uh, I think that's because fear of the Lord is actually about a clarity of vision, seeing God uh, as we should, uh, uh, rightly discerning His character and His nature, and then by extension, seeing ourselves more clearly and, and, and more accurately uh, in light of who God is. And uh, I think it's the difference between first and second hand information. You know, uh, an example of that is a drummer once who argued with a, a, a singer about the arrangement of this particular song, wanting it to play it their way, uh, the way the drummer wants it to play, uh, only to discover halfway through the argument that the person the drummer is arguing with, the singer, is in fact the songwriter as well. And so therefore the songwriter knew how the song needed to be arranged and of course that settled the argument because it was first-hand information. Uh, with myself, you know, a short story is that of electricity. I was always told to respect electricity, you know, watch out for the voltage. Um, until the day that I made the mistake, I was working on a plug while it was still plugged into the socket and I experienced an, an electrical shock and that was first-hand information. I, I, from then onwards, definitely treated uh, electricity with far greater respect because I experienced it firsthand. And, and the question we're asking today is, do you fear God? But more specifically, uh, do you understand or is your understanding of God based on God, God's self-revelation, on His own self-revelation? Because that's an important thing. Uh, it's a big deal because, I mean, even through Alpha, when we have these discussions with guests that are not Christians, uh, they often tell us what they think God is like, but it's based on their own assumptions and not based on God's revelation, what He has written about and has revealed uh, about Himself. And, uh, and so I, I love what verse 25 says in Psalm 22. Uh, it says, From you comes my praise in the great congregation. And here it's amazing to, to, to praise God. It means to come near to Him, to approach Him. And, and we can often think that when God reveals Himself, especially as He's outlined in the Scriptures, a holy God, a creator God, an omnipotent God, the, the, um, the initial reaction might be to want to run. But just like with my experience of voltage, when I uh, understood uh, that electricity is dangerous, I didn't write electricity out of my life completely. I still use electricity, but I have a healthy and an appropriate fear and respect for electricity. And it's the same with God when He reveals Himself, like who He is. Um, it is an invitation. Revelation from God is an invitation not to run, but to come close to Him. And that's what Psalm 24, uh, 22 verse 24 says. It says, For He has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden His face from Him but has heard when he cried to him. I love that metaphor of not hiding his face. 
We all know what this is. And uh, you know, a few days ago, a friend of mine popped into the Waypoint uh, to come and say hi, but initially I thought he was the Amazon delivery man or something. I did not recognize him because of the mask, because our faces is what we use to recognize and see who the, the real person is. And I love that God saying here that he has not hidden his face from those that are afflicted uh, and the affliction from sinners like you and me. Because let's just face it, if you read your Bible, you know that seeing God's face and getting out alive was not always the norm. Uh, you know, you just ask Moses, for example. Um, but now even here we see the psalmist and for us on the other side of what Christ has accomplished for us, we can actually be satisfied, as this verse says, that the afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. We will see the face of God. It's an amazing thing. Let me end off with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. That says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? It starts off by saying, yes, the God who said, let light shine out of darkness. God starts to reveal himself to people through creation. But if you want to see God in high definition, he's, he's fast forwarded and he's made himself uh, um, visible through Christ. Starts with creation, but high definition view of who God is, is seen in Christ. And over this Easter time, en route to Easter, we are focusing on the cross and the resurrection. Uh, and at the cross, we know that's where the Father's face turned away from Jesus because our sin was upon Him. And, uh, and it's so that when we accept what Jesus has done for us, the Father's face can turn, turn to us and we can see God in the face of Christ. That is amazing news. And so I would love for us to end off by reflecting on this reality of the fear of the Lord that's connected to God's revelation, His self-revelation, ultimately in the person of Jesus. Two questions will be on screen. Do you have a healthy fear of the Lord based on His self-revelation? And can you commit to mining the Scriptures and relying on the Spirit to see God clearer? second half of verse 23 uh, of Psalm 22 says that we stand in awe of him. And, and then he goes on by saying, because God has not hidden his face from us. And so I trust that, uh, that as you reflect on what God has done for you, uh, that you would stand in awe and have a healthy fear. Let's end off by uh, reading this prayer together. God of mercy, you are full of tenderness and compassion slow to anger, rich in mercy, and always ready to forgive. Help us to experience the joy of fearing you. Grant us grace to renounce all evil and to cling to Christ, that in every way we may prove to be your loving children, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.